Someone's got a birthday coming up. I know, I can't believe he's already gonna be five. It seems like just yesterday that I was lying on that table cursing at Jimmy and praying for a little relief. <laughs> then nine months later, we had Dominic. Are you guys planning on having a B-I-R-T-H-D-A-Y-P-A-R-T-Y? We don't like to spell around Dominic. Uh, it confuses him? No, it confuses us. <laughs> we find it easier just to get rid of him. Hey, Dominic, uh, you, you want to play hide and go seek? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we got about five minutes. So what are you guys doing for his birthday? Oh, he's usually happy with just a birthday cake and a few candles. That way he's got his two favorite things, sugar and fire. <laughs> He's not spending his birthday with other children? Uh, Dominic doesn't really like being around other children. What do you mean he lives with two children, Logan and Sam? Well, yeah, but that's different. I mean, you know, they don't talk, they crawl around, they eat things that Dominic drops on the floor. He <laughs> thinks of them more like dogs who bark funny. Hey. Hey, where have you been? The grocery store. I saw the list you put on the refrigerator. Somebody deserves a little kiss. I didn't leave a list. Thank you. You wrote the list? You were running low on stuff. Jimmy, that's so rude. See if I need anything before you leave Greg a list. I, I can't believe he left me a list. I can't believe you think I'd spell butter with two Ds. Hey, did you know that Christine and Jimmy aren't throwing a birthday party for Dominic? It's probably just a money thing. Well, that's not what this should be about. I mean, Dominic's our nephew. Let's just tell him we'll throw the party. Great. Dominic's gonna be so excited. Yeah, I hope so. I want to do whatever I can to make sure that child grows up happy and successful. So one day he can move out of this house and take his freeloading parents with him. <laughs> We decided to throw Dominic a birthday party. Our treat. Oh my God, that's so nice. Hey guys, we really appreciate this. And you know what, someday I'm gonna pay back every cent. Yeah, right. No, <laughs> seriously. And, and to show you I mean business tomorrow, I'm gonna start looking for a job. Start looking, start looking for a job? Jimmy, you've lived here for five months. You haven't been looking for a job? Look, I, I don't just want any job. You know, if I was gonna sell, I would've stayed back east. Jimmy, you just can't wait around for your dream job. You have to do like I did at the studio. I took an entry-level position and I worked my way up. These days, you, you can find low-level jobs anywhere. What about where you work? <laughs> uh, no, that's all filled up. That whole studio no, is not nothing. a single, it was not no, one single, nothing. but... No, nothing. No. Oh, it's so crowded there, I can barely get to my office. You know, man, is it full there. Well, that's too bad, because, you know, I was... I was looking to get a fresh start, you know? Get in somewhere where people don't know the old me, and I can, you know, prove that I'm responsible. Daddy, please look for me. I'm getting cold. <laughs> Don't worry about Jimmy, you know, he'll get a job soon. He knows without a job, he can't achieve his lifelong dream, collecting permanent disability. When you say there are no jobs at the studio... I know, I could barely keep a straight face. I don't know where I pulled that one from. Greg, he needs a job. Kim, he, he cannot work at the studio, okay? Because when I drive on that lot and that gate closes behind me, I know for the next eight hours there will be no Jimmy. They have actual guards there to keep him out. Okay? You know, the longer he's not working, the longer he'll be living in our guest house. Now, can't you at least just get him an interview? and Maybe that'll jumpstart and motivate him. Or we can just drive them all out to the country, open the car door, and hope they run free. <laughs> Greg, are you going to get him the interview or not? Of course I'm going to get him the interview. From the second you asked, you knew I was going to do it. Why do we even have these conversations? I swear you should just tie my hands up with string and dance me around. <laughs> Mr. Bradley, I'm Greg Warner. I think my assistant called. Yes, Mr. Warner. Come in, come in. 
I, I didn't know you'd be coming personally. We don't get a lot of executives down here. I'm Jimmy Hughes, Greg's brother-in-law. I need a job. Oh, the brother-in-law needs a job. I get it, Mr. Warner. No, 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 there's nothing to get. And there's no winking, okay? There's no winking. You should just put as little effort into this as you would for anyone you may or may not like. Well, let's see what we've got. Way to pull some strings. What the hell are you doing? Well, Jimmy, I think you should get this job on your own merit, okay? I, I want them to think of you as Jimmy the person and not Jimmy Gregg's brother-in-law. Well, Greg, if you're worried about my dignity, just remember that my last job was dressing up as a giant sponge outside a car wash. <laughs> A sponge, huh? Must have been quite a stretch for you. Well, we do have a few uh, positions open. Okay, then uh, I'll leave you alone and uh, let you interview him like any other possible employee that does uh, not have a college education and a minor police record. Police record? What, what, what did you say that for? It is better to tell this stuff right up front instead of them finding this out later. It, it was really nothing, really. What happened was Jimmy beat up a couple of security guards at a frat party, and that's how he got kicked out of college, depriving him from a college degree. Now, whether he had the grades or not to get the degree in the first place is immaterial. Summing up, uneducated, prone to violence. Good luck, buddy. Come on, Eileen, well, I swear what he means at this moment. You mean everything. Have a good night, Mr. Warner. You too, Jimmy. Yeah. I don't think there's any damage. I won't have to write you up. What the hell are you doing? My job. Yeah, Mr. Bradley thought since I could take out three security guards, I deserved a shot at the gate. That's what we call this here, the gate. Uh, yeah, uh, hold on. really having fun planning Dominic's party. <laughs> now, I thought we'd start with giant bubbles, then balloon animal fun, followed by Katie, the singing lady. Well, I hope Dominic doesn't freak out being around all those other kids. Oh, I'm sure he'll be fine once he gets used to them. I bet Dominic can't wait to make new friends, right, Dominic? He can't hear you when he's watching TV. <laughs> well, then maybe we should just... Hey! Hey. Hey, hon. Where's Jimmy? Showing his pepper spray to Mrs. Marshall next door. <laughs> wow, they gave him pepper spray on his second day? You know, I don't think Jimmy has ever had a job with this much responsibility. You know, I'm glad he's working and all, but let's face it, he's not transporting plutonium. He basically sits in a booth and raises a gate. As long as the gate doesn't fall off, it's a good day. <laughs> Sorry, man, just uh, flush your eyes out with a little water. You should be okay. <laughs> There's my working man. How was your day? Not too bad. The gate fell off, but I uh, was able to fix it. <laughs> but you know the best part of my day? Check this out. What's this? Oh my God, Jimmy, what are you doing in a Rolls Royce? Well, I'm uh, getting my Christmas card picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wait till the folks back home see how well I'm doing out in L.A. <laughs> that's Gary Walden's car. He's the head of the studio. Yeah, yeah, that's Gary. He took the picture. <laughs> You talked to Gary Walden? Yeah, he's a nice guy, yeah. I told him I wouldn't let him through the gate unless he took a picture of me in his car. And... <laughs> he went with it. So basically, you held the head of the studio hostage so you could get in his car and put your feet on his dash. Jimmy, I can't believe you would do this. Greg, relax. I'm sure it's no big deal. Yeah, it's just a picture. Yeah, a picture of your last day at work. I'm probably gonna get fired, too. I got you the job. Well, you don't really think I'm gonna get fired, do you? No, probably would have done that already if he was going to do it. Just promise me you're not going to bother anyone else at the studio. Yeah, all right, I promise. There's only three things you have to do as a security guard. Check people's passes, open the gate, and wave. And even waving's optional. Go out back, kids. It's almost time to decorate the pizzas. Hi, I'm Stan, the reptile man. A reptile man, I ordered a singing lady. Yeah, Katie could make it. She picked up some head lice from a game of Duck Duck Goose. <laughs> the service sent me. Where do you want me to set up? Well, what is it that you do exactly? I introduce the kids to the wonderful world of reptiles and creepy crawly things. Well, do you do you sing at all? 
I could do Itsy Bitsy Spider. And show them the big spiders. Oh, sweet mother. <laughs> Why don't you go set up in the backyard? Um, do you know who the redheaded kid is? That's Timmy Doyle from across the street. Yeah. Uh, did he come with clothes? <laughs> I think so. Okay, well, we either have to find him a pair of underpants or get him out of the moon bounce. <laughs> oh, don't you think we should get Dominic away from the TV? He's missing his whole party. Dominic's just not used to being around so many kids. He just, he needs some time to relax and, you know, we'll get into the swing of things soon enough. No, I really wouldn't worry. That stupid bunny. <laughs> hey. I got the ice, but don't rip it out of my arms. Ow, they were stuck to my arms. Thanks for going to the store, Greg. Hey, Greg, you know, I feel really bad about bothering the head of the studio like that, and uh, I just thought it'd be funny. Oh, forget about it. Enjoy your son's birthday. I know you didn't mean it. He's probably forgot about the whole thing anyway. Yeah, he told me he wasn't mad at all. <laughs> you talk. To him again. Well, I felt so bad about bothering him, I went up to his office and apologized to his face. You, you, you bothered him in his office? No, no, I didn't bother him at all. He said he was getting out of the meeting anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Check this out. Got Mel Gibson's autograph. You interrupted a meeting between the head of the studio and Mel Gibson so you could apologize for bothering him? Are you beginning to smell the idiot in this recipe? No, no, look, don't worry. No, Gary was really cool about it, man. He was, he was really nice. In fact, he was so nice, I invited him to the party. What? Yeah, he said he'd try to come by. Yeah, I'm sure he'd try to come. That way he can fire us both in front of our families. Listen, man, he sounded sincere. Yeah, of course he sounds sincere. He's the most respected and successful studio head in Hollywood. In a city of liars, he's the king. I guess you're right. Oh. Hey, Jimmy. Sorry I'm late. Uh, uh, Gary, what are you doing here? You invited me. Your son's birthday party? Oh, I, I was just doing that to be nice. I didn't really want you to come. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> come on in. <laughs> you got me there. Jimmy, I haven't figured out yet if you're stupid or fearless. Well, my wife's got money on stupid. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Hey, this is my son, Anthony. Hey, Anthony. This is my son, Dominic. Hey, Dominic, this is Anthony and Mr. Walden. Mr. Walden's my boss. Everything you watch on TV, he makes it. <laughs> hey. Hi there. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I can't believe he made the head of the studio come to my house. I'm sure he didn't make him. Oh, he made him. He has a way. Starts looking at you with those droopy, feed me eyes, and next thing you know, he's sleeping naked at the foot of your bed. He had a few too many wine coolers that night, and it never happened again. Look at him out there, talking to Gary like Gary likes him. Maybe he does like him. That is impossible. Why? Because uh, he should like me. I'm the one that plays by the rules. I see Gary on the lot every day. Do I talk to him? No. I completely ignore him. Does he appreciate it? No, he's acting like I don't even exist. Maybe he doesn't know you exist. Let's go out there and talk to him. I'm not going to talk to him. I'm not ready for this. I was going to ignore him a couple more months, and then I was going to start giving him the chin. The chin? Yeah, you know, when you walk by and give him one of these. And then you just keep right on walking. I keep giving him the chin in my own house. <laughs> So let me get this straight. You're going to wait two months to give him the chin. Then, what, uh, another month before you wave? And then maybe after a couple of years, you'll be ready to say hello? I don't think Gary's prepared to commit this much time to your relationship. Yeah, well, go ahead and laugh. It's how I got you. Hi. gotten acquainted. Maybe you'd like to... Hey! <laughs> Jimmy. Mm. Who's a nervous little guy who keeps looking at me?
hell are you doing? You're freaking Gary out. What? I'm just giving him his space. You're also giving him the creeps. Now, you just go up and talk to him. I can't do that. Why not? Because what if, what if he doesn't like me? Why wouldn't he like you? Because he's the boss. He's a big shot. Why wouldn't he want to talk to me? I mean, who am I? You know what? Your problem is you put people up on a pedestal. Okay, you think just because, you know, someone makes more money or is more successful or is smarter or more powerful, it makes them a better person than you. But that is exactly what makes somebody better than you. No, it's not. It's being a good, decent person or a professional football player that makes you better. <laughs> just be yourself and go up and talk to him. Well, that's easy for you to say, Jimmy. You talk to everyone like they're your Uncle Billy Bob. I don't know how the hell you do it. I just find something we have in common, like with Gary. Okay, when I saw when I saw him on the lot, okay, he makes television shows. I watch television shows. Bam, we're friends. <laughs> and just go up and treat him like a regular guy. You're right. You're right. Uh, I'll go up and talk to him because he's he is a regular guy, and I'll, and I'll just be myself. Yeah, wh 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 where are you going? To put on a nicer shirt. <laughs> I'm just uh, admiring your kitchen. Thank you. <laughs> so, what are you going to show the kids? Oh, uh, you know, I have some spiders and lizards, a uh, couple frogs. That's about it. Oh, really? I thought that you guys usually bring like a big snake or something. Nah. <laughs> Snake's sick. Well, good. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope he gets better, but I'm just a little squeamish around snakes. <laughs> Kim, this party was a great idea. Come see all the friends that Dominic's made. Oh, I knew it! I knew this would bring him out of his shell. <laughs> oh, no! Kim, you just turned it off! <laughs> sure, honey, you did great. Dominic never lets us many kids watch TV with him. Thanks for the party, Aunt Kim. You're welcome, Dominic. I'm just so glad that you're having a happy... Shh. <laughs> oh, Mr. Walden, I'm, I'm Greg Warner. Oh, hey, hey, uh, nice to meet you. Yeah. Hey, call me Gary, huh? Okay, Gary. You know, I work at the studio. Yeah, 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 of course. I, I thought your name sounded familiar. Yeah, I see you there all the time, usually in the commissary eating lunch. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, just noticing yesterday you were enjoying the captain's platter. <laughs> you watch me eat? No, it's just, you know, we were having the same thing. It's like a couple Tuesdays ago, I noticed we were wearing the same shirt. <laughs> you keep track of what I'm wearing? No, absolutely not. It's just, you know, I'm stuck in my mind because we were wearing the same shirt. <laughs> Probably bought it at the same store. I know you live out in Brentwood. <laughs> How do you know where I live? Uh, not for any weird reason. It's just I work in business affairs and sometimes I have to send contracts right out to your house. <laughs> it's just like I have a, you know, tremendous memory for details, you know. It's kind of a curse. I got all those numbers jumbled up there, you know, like 702. One three nine seven two four. Recognize that? It's your social security number. <laughs> I know that sounds strange, but I'm just a regular guy. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Hey, this guy's got quite the arm on. Hey, I bet he does. Hey, hey buddy, you want a cookie? Yum. Ah, oh, look at it. He likes it. See, I'm not weird. <laughs> Daddy, my tongue itches. That cookie doesn't have peanuts in it, does it? <laughs> Don't worry, the kid's gonna be fine. Oh, thank God. How was I supposed to know he was allergic to peanuts? Look, I need to talk to Gary. I need to apologize. Yeah, Gary doesn't really want to talk to you. Oh, okay. I understand. It's been a long day. But I'll tell you one thing, I've learned my lesson. From now on, when I see him on the lot, I'm just gonna talk to him like he's a regular guy. Yeah, he, he doesn't want you to talk to him. He, in fact, wants you to just go back to ignoring him. What? No, I have to talk to him. I, I have to explain. No, 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 I think he's really serious about keeping you away. He's even hired some personal security. 
Jimmy, that's ridiculous. Greg, I'm sorry, I can't let you do that. He's hired you as his security? You, you're supposed to follow him around? No, I'm supposed to follow you around. Well, that is just stupid. Get away from me, Jimmy. Just doing my job, sir. Did that guy say when he was coming back to pick up his snake? He said, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>